Hello Mountain Chums, me again today. Today we're doing the famous Kentmere Horseshoe, or Kentmere Round. It's an 8 Wainwright day, it should be about 13 miles. We start out of Kentmere up the Garburn Pass, or Pass if you prefer. It's a pretty early start today, partly for parking, because there's not a great deal of space in Kentmere but also because it's the beginning of November and I've got about nine hours of daylight. I've got my head torch obviously, but I'd rather not use it if I don't have to. Coming up on the left is Badger Rock, which is well known in mountaineering circles as a good bouldering rock. Supposedly the biggest in the Lake District. Also known as the Brock Stone. Supposedly badgers lived underneath it. Down in Kentmere is Kentmere Hall, which is a fortified farm. Looks a little bit like a castle. Up to the left are another two Wainwrights, which we'll have to do another day. Sallows and Sour Howls. But it's a long enough day as it is about adding those today. It's definitely autumnal. There's a chill in the air. I suspect we'll have snow in a couple of weeks. We're on Crabtree Brow, which gets up to the Garburn Pass. Or we'll pass. There's a nicely new laid path or path, which heads right directly up towards Yoke. Saves having to go up to the muddy wall path. Buck Crag up to the right, and beyond it is Yoke. It's only brightening up a bit. Wish I brought my sunglasses now. I was genuinely not expecting to see the sun today. Well, the forecast I read suggested that I'd be lucky to get overcast and not rain, but we'll see how we get on. It's a nice way to start, anyway. Something tells me I'm not going to beat the fell runner, so I'm not even going to try. Yoke, 706 meters. 
2,316 feet. I'm not going to succumb to the temptation to crack a lot of egg jokes or yolk. You know, even though I think one would be enough. Come on then to Ill Bell, which is very distinctive. There are two ill bells on this route. There's this one, which is just ill bell. And further around is Mardale ill bell. Now I've tried to look up why and what ill bell actually means. I'm afraid I've found nothing. I know what Mardale means and I'll come to that in a bit. It's an iconic cairn on ill bell. An iconic pair of cairns, I should have said. By my reckoning, the second one is actually the summit, although technically I think they're both about the same height. That's Ill Bell, 757 metres, 2,484 feet. Here we head north to Frostwick and then Thornthwaite Crag, which is easy for you to say, and then head on back round. It's looking like an amazing day, I think I'm really lucky. Although it is very windy. Frostwick, 720 metres, 2,360 feet in the wind. From here we head on to Thornthwaite Crag. That's Thornthwaite Crag, 784 metres, 2,572 feet. As Wainwright said, it's sometimes difficult to recall the details of familiar summits, but surely all who have climbed Thornthwaite Crag will identify it in memory by its remarkable 14-foot column, one of the most distinctive cairns in Lakeland. I'm not sure it is still 14 feet high, it's a bit unstable at the moment, but it's still a very distinctive cairn. From here we head round to Mardale Ill Bell, if you can, if you wish, and I am not going to today, go up to High Street itself, because this is all part of the old Roman road. Today, and given that we've got a limited number of daylight hours, 
I suppose every day has a limited number of daylight hours, but anyway, <laughs> given that today we have a reduced number of daylight hours, I'm going to skip High Street and go straight across to Mardell Il Bell. Thornthwaite Crag was Wainwright number four today, which is pretty good going, although it is cold. On the plus side, it's not raining, so you know. Mardale Hill Bell, of course, is named after the village of Mardale, a now drowned village under Hall's Water, which was a reservoir built in the 1930s. In periods of drought, the village reappears, or well, the roads and bridges anyway. Everything else is demolished, blown up most of it, other than the church, which was taken down build a tower which you can still see today. This main path actually passes below the summit of Mardale Lil Bell, so we have to break left to go straight up to the top. Like the top to me. Okay, this is Wainwright number five. This is Mardale Ill Bell, 760 meters, 2,490 feet. The next hill to do is Harter Fell, which from here looks like a bit of a slog, but it's, if I remember correctly, not quite as bad as it looks. From Harter Fell, we go over to Kenmare Pike, and from there to Shipman Knot, and then home. Oh my word, what a good day. Behind me, to the northeast, is Horswater. Just down on this right hand side is where Bardale used to be. I think it reappeared this summer, but given the rain we've had over the last few weeks, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it's disappeared again. Come on then. The long pull up to Heart of Fell comes at exactly the last moment you really want to, when you're a bit tired after the first half of the round. Maybe you've had lunch. I have had my first mince pie of the year, which makes me very happy. From the saddle coming up, there's another way off the horseshoe, which saves Heart of Fell, Ketmere Pike and Shipman Knot and goes back down the valley towards the reservoir. It's a little zigzag path, but if the weather or the time is against you, it's another way off. It's almost the only way off uh, the Kentman Horseshoe, oddly. Uh, on the other side, particularly, the slopes are really steep and best avoided for a descent. Sign says the left hand side goes down into Mardale. What's left to it? You know, while I'm doing this, what you could do is just click that subscribe button 
and that would make things all right somehow. a much nicer climb than it looks from the other side which is probably just as well of course the weather's always like this in the lakes if not better So that's heart of fell, 778 meters, 2,552 feet. It's Wainwright's crown of thorns cairn, although it's got a little bit covered over in rocks. From here, we head back down towards Kentmere Pike. And from there, shipment knots. But the sun's sinking and we need to get Viva Riggle on. On Eva. Looks like the top, doesn't it? Come with me over the stile. Jake point. I made that Kentmere Pike, 730 meters, 2,400 feet. Our seventh Wainwright. The last one is over there, Shipman Knot. And uh, yeah, the sun is definitely not on our side today so we better crack on I reckon the hill off to the left is Goat Scar 
which, and I'm sure it's a lovely hill, is not a Wainwright. So for purposes of today's walk, we're going to ignore that and carry straight on over to Shipman Knots. I did need my sunglasses after all. I make that shipment knots 587 meters, 1,926 feet. Our eighth and final Wainwright of the day. And it is absolutely stunning. The sun's sinking low, glinting over Windermere. And I think that tells us it's time to go home. Come on. Well, that's about it from me, in the daylight anyway. Thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are. If you've enjoyed this, do please like and subscribe. And join us once again, hopefully, for another Wainwright walk. Stay safe. Windermere just coming out of the hills. That doesn't make any sense. While I'm doing this little climb, what you could do, just click on the old subscribe button down there and have a little, uh, little thanks from me. While I'm doing this little climb, it'd be nice if you could just click that subscribe button and then, uh, you know, lots of lovely warm fuzzy feelings will come to you. And that's a guarantee, not a guarantee.